Hi guys, it's uh, Sam for Digital Meat, and um, in this tutorial we're going to be um, picking up where we left off from the last uh, uh, tutorial, actually. Um, the last tutorial, um, what was this one? Uh, making a crouch action for the Xbox controller in Unity. So we're going to expand upon that now, and um, I'm actually going to make a, uh, the trigger button on the Xbox controller um, uh, the left trigger actually the uh, like a zoom so you can sort of focus in on ob objects and that kind of thing and we're going to do that inside Playmaker um, so this is going to differ slightly because whereas before when we made the crouch we were using the B button and that has two states um, it's either on or off um, whereas a trigger is a value between 0 and 1 so it can you know be 0.5 or 0.6 or so there's different levels within there so let's have a look at our if we go up to edit and go to project settings go to input we can see left triggers being set up here and um it's actually a joystick axis and that's the ninth axis so um uh if you remember from um the tutorial where we actually set up the xbox controller um, if you type Uni Xbox controller into Google and then uh, click on this wiki, it actually um, shows you what what everything is and how it's named. So um, the triggers are third axis triggers. So let's have a look. How's that defined? Blah, 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 axes. Right, left trigger, nine, and right trigger is ten, and that's what we've got set up here. Um, yeah, there you go, ninth axis joystick. Okay, right, so how would we set this up in Playmaker? Well, like our crouch, we created a sort of empty null object, something to attach our our state machine to. Um, I'll apologize now, if you can hear some rustling about in the background, it's uh, the cat's in a box and he's rolling around in it like a fool. So um, yeah, that'll be what that is. Okay, so like the uh, B button crouch, I'm gonna create a empty object I'm gonna rename it I'm gonna call this left trigger left trigger zoom let me know what it does um, I'm just gonna smack this in here somewhere that'll do and I'm gonna right click on that and uh, oh, well actually I can uh, add FSM so it puts our start and state one and it adds this little tag just like before so where do we start? So if we if you look at our B button crouch and go to the first um, our listener, we're getting button down. Now we can't do that because the um, left trigger isn't a button; it's an axis. So you guessed it. What we really want is get access. So if we um, click on our state, I'm going to rename this listener because it's listening. Listen. Uh, yeah okay and we go to our action browser we can delete this at the top there and we can type get axis mm -mm 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 -mm. here we go get axis it's there so we select it add action to state and it adds it into our uh, state machine okay so the axis name it wants a value so um, what's this New variable, new global variable, no, okay. So we can actually put the name in there. Um, so if we go to edit, project settings, input, we can go to our left trigger, um, and it is called left trigger. So that's fine. And then we can go back to our left trigger zoom and we can put the axis name in here. Boom, like that. Press enter. Now this multiplier here, um, type is float. Axis values in the range of minus one to one. Use the multiplier to set large ranges. I'm going to leave that as it is now, and then we can we can um, we can come back to it if we need to tweak. If I leave it at one, it will kind of show you what um, like this value does. So I'm going to just leave that there for now. Um, store. So. If we're um, pushing the trigger down and it has a value, we're going to need to store that value. 
So at the moment it's set to none. And um and uh we don't want that. We we need to create a new variable to store it. So if I click new variable and it's gonna ask me what I want to call it. Let's call it left trigger press. That makes sense. Okay, create variable. So now if we actually go across to our, we've got different tabs up here. So we've got the FSM tab. Um, that's its general settings. We've got the state, which is what we were just looking at. Events, we haven't created anything for this FSM. And variables, and there we can see our left trigger press, and it's a float value, which is what we want. A float value. Um, so if we had a, if we change this to bool, this variable is used. You sure you want to change its type? Yes. A bool is true or false, one or zero. It's only got two, two types. But a float is kind of like an integer. It's, uh, you know, it's uh, between. It's between one and zero. Okay, so yeah, okay, it's a float. I wonder why that popped up a minute ago. Oh, there we go. And it's asking for a float value as well. So, um, in fact, let me let me cross this off. I just want to make sure everything's fine. Um, so we go back to our state, new variable. Left trigger press. Sorry, guys, fasting about a little bit. Create variable. Um, go to variables. It is a flow. Blah blah blah. It's just weird that when I yeah okay okay this is totally separate. I can just add new variables from down here. Okay, so we've got our float. It's a value between one and uh, zero and one. So it could be zero point one, zero point two five. So that's all we need for that. So if you click on the list now, it takes us back to our state um, thing. Now every frame, we want to, when we press the access, we want it to know exactly where it is every frame. If we took that off, it would only look for it on the press. I mean, it says here, Boolean, repeat every frame. Typically, this would be set to true. So we're going to leave that as it is for that one. Um, so the next thing we need to do is we need to add our float variable, I suppose. Okay, how's a good way to explain this? Okay, well let's set let's set the camera field um, field of view. So so we can set camera FOV. Okay, so we can add this to our state and it's going to ask um, what is the game object it says use owner we don't want to use the owner because it's an empty null so we're going to specify game object and the game object that we want to specify is not the FPS controller because as you can see if we look down there there's naturally no camera on this part of it it's the first person character and here we can see the camera um, so I'm going to grab the um, select that grab the first person character and drag this into the here here we go so let's go back to the first person character and we can see the field of view here is um, it's set to 60 um, which is correct that's what we want um, so we'll leave that as it is um, and in the field of view here it's saying that it's actually um, 50. So when we start the game, it will automatically snap to this value, which we don't want. We want it to be 60. Um, now, do we need it every frame? Yes, we do, because well, actually, I'm going to leave that off and see what happens. Um, something else I should mention, that's, these icons are quite big, so if you go to gizmos and click off 3D icons, it should shrink them down. So that's a little bit better. Um, also, if I go to my FPS controller, I think I turned the audio off last time. It's on again, so we'll turn that off because the footsteps are a little annoying, um, especially when I'm trying to talk. Um, let's save our scene, what we've got so far. So I'm just going to grab my Xbox controller, I'm going to press play, and see what we've got so far. 
Just having a good old think about it. Okay, so there we are. We've got a jump. We've got a crouch from our last tutorial. And if I press the left trigger to zoom, nothing actually happens. So let's have a look. Let's have a look what's going on, shall we? First person character, let's trigger zoom. So it's in the listener. Let's drag this up a little bit. Um, and we've got our left trigger. And you can see that nothing's happening. And there's a reason for this. Okay, so I'm just gonna put my controller back down. Right, come off, come off of that. Okay, now there's an important, um, there's an important thing we need between get axis and set camera field of view. And it's because in get axis, the axis, um, we're taking our left trigger press here, um, multiplying it by whatever number, and we're storing that left trigger press in a variable called left trigger press. Um, and it's got a store that it's got to pass this variable onto set the camera field of view, but there is nothing to pass it onto to this. It's just set camera field of view and that's it. That doesn't help us. So what we need to do is float add. That's what we need to do. So we've got our float that's stored in this variable. Um, and we need to, okay, let's just do it. So we'll go to get actions. I'm going to type float add and we select that add action to state, close this window down. Um, and I'm going to drag it above set field of view. Um, okay. So we've got get axis. It gets the axis, stores it in a variable. Then it's going to say float variable. Um, and we're going to choose the variable that we created. So we've got the left trigger press. Um, and again, uh, repeat every frame while the state is active. We want to do that. Or you can do it per second, but we want every frame because we want a smooth integer. Um, and we've chose to add nothing at, at the moment. So let's do some experimentation with these numbers now. Right, if I press play, there we go, we've got our thing and I'm looking around and if I press the left trigger, it's not actually doing anything. So we've got a, um, actually let's, uh, let's go up here, actually. So uh, if I go to the camera, we can see our field of view then and I'll lock this. So it won't come off the screen. If I go back to the left trigger zoom, we can see all our uh, actions and our states. Um, so you can see it's set to 60. I think um, we actually need to, pardon me. We actually need to um, set our camera field of view. We need it to check every frame. So let's try it again. Okay, so we do that. And we're still getting no result from the left trigger. So it's our numbers. Right, so this field of view, um, there's our camera preview. Let's have a look at the game preview. It's currently set to 60, and if I drag it down, that zooms it in. So we, we actually need to make our field of view sort of, um, we need to set it so it's lower. Um, okay, so how would we go about this then? Right, field of view, it's actually set to 60. I, um, we don't actually want that, and there's something else that I forgot. We actually want to select the variable left trigger press because this is what um, is going to. Um, let's deactivate this for a moment. Get axis, we've got the left trigger press, and then it passes to the camera field of view. I'm just going to turn float add off so we can have a look and see if it actually affects it in any way. Oh dear, I don't know what's going on there. We seem to have lost our, our window though. And it's possibly because the the value is set to one here. Um, so it's got, you know, it's got a multiplier of one. If I whack this up to, I'm editing the FSM while the game is playing. Changes will be lost when you stop playing. I'm aware of that. Okay, so, okay. Let's try it again then. If I multiplied this by 20, 
I went wrong. It's actually got a field of view of zero. You can see that it's snapped right down to zero. So that is really not helping us. So what if I get a multiplier? So instead of multiplier, what if I go minus 20? Axis values, what does this say? Axis values are in the range of minus one to one. Use the multiplier to set a larger range. Okay, so let's try this then. Okay, it's still zero. And this is why I needed to add the add float. Okay, so let's turn this back on. We've got an add of zero at the moment. Um, so let's go, no. Still making our field of view zero. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna change my add float to, let's add 60 to it. Let's see what we get. Right, okay, so our add, this doesn't actually, let's, let's turn this to zero and see what happens. Sorry about the clanging about, it's my Xbox controller falling off the, um, okay, so we've got a multiplier of zero and we've all, let me get back in here, drag this up a little bit. We've got a multiplier of zero and um, we've got an add of 60. Okay, so it's basically saying the field of view is 60. Okay, so we move around and if I press the Z button, you can still see nothing's happening. So I'm getting the axes multiplying it by zero. Um, the add is telling it is 60 and this is um, taking the left trigger press um, variable. Okay, so what we can do now then is um, reframe, reframe. Sorry, I'm just checking it over. What if I put a positive number in here then? Let's put 10. We'll multiply it by 10. So now we start off at 60. And if I press the left trigger button, it actually makes the field of view go the other way. It's going to 70, which is no good. We want it to go the other way. Um, so really, this multiply needs to be a minus number. So I'm going to say minus 20. We add a value of 60 to the float. And then pass it on to the... Uh, set field of view so if i press play now and if we look over in the um let me just escape out of that if we look over here at the camera you can see the field of view here so we can keep an eye on that while it changes so i can walk around now i can go up to this and press my trigger button and it reduces it to 40 and you can see that it zooms in and the good thing about this is because it's um a trigger is an axis um, you can actually, instead of it being on and off, you've got degrees. So if I hold the trigger down slightly, it slightly moves in. And you can see um, the, the field of view in the camera at the right hand side going between 40 and 60, but I can control that. There you go, lovely. So it's a nice little sort of like zoom thing. So if you're wandering around uh, an environment where you've got to look at a table or something like that, you can hold it down and have a good look what's there and then make your selection with I don't know, X or whatever. Um, so that's how you set up a, um, get out there. that's how you set up a, uh, a simple zoom. Um, there's probably other ways to do this. That's the way that I did it. Um, and again, I'm by no means, you know, a master of this. I'm kind of learning it as I go along kind of thing and just sort of pass it on to you guys. So again, if anyone's got a better method of doing this, um, I'm not too happy about this checking every frame business because obviously that's that's a drain on on resources but um yeah if anyone else has got a better method um you know this check every frame here if someone's got a better method than that that'd be that'd be great to see in the comments um and i think that's large largely it for this tutorial so remember check out the website digitalme.uk the youtube channel twitter facebook all the all the usual and um um, so, okay, thanks for listening, guys. Bye.